Hello, dear friends of ICASI. My name is Gerhard Baumer. I am from Germany. I live in Flensburg, high in the north, close to the Danish border. I feel very sad because it is not possible to sit together with you today, that we are not able to be together in Minsk at ICASI and to personally talk to each other at ICASI in Minsk. Nevertheless, it is a great pleasure for me to contribute online. I will talk to you and tell you more about dreams and about sleep as well. Research about dream work and sleep is done in different labs, sleep labs, especially using MRI scans and EEGs. EEGs measure the current curves of the brain and in an MRI scan you can map and evaluate the activity patterns of the brain. Let us talk about sleep first. While we are sleeping we go through different stages starting with the light sleep stage. During the light sleep stage, the limbic system and especially the thalamus start taking control of the brain. First of all, it blocks the axis of the sensory organs like the ears, the eyes and the nose to the brain, thereby preventing that sensory experience can disturb us and interrupt our sleep. The hypothalamus also interrupts the connections to the cordial system, which is the gray matter which allows us to think and act logically. The light sleep stage will last for about 10 minutes. If we are not disturbed during that time, we pass over to a deep sleep stage, which usually lasts about 90 minutes. Apparently, there is nothing really important ha happening during this stage. If we woke up a student taking part in an experiment during the stage, he would tell us that he does not really remember special dream events. He might tell us about single dream images or of some sensations like flashes and light and other short phenomena in color. But we won't hear about long dream sequences, even if there is a dream work in a limited extent. The most important thing that happened during this stage is the repair works, which are realized in the brain and also in the whole body. While working, our cells are constantly producing waste products, transformation products, and even some toxic substances. And these products and substances from all of the body, mainly protein compounds, are disposed of during this first deep sleep stage. The waste products of the brain are disposed of via the brain water and the spinal cord water, whereas the waste products of the body are disposed of via the lymphatic system. During these 90 minutes, also some repair work is done, for example, of the skin cells. They are renewed and strengthened. And there is done waste work in the liver and other organs. All of this is essential for keeping us in good health. After the first deep sleep stage of 90 minutes, we pass over to the REM sleep stage. REM stands for rapid eye movement. During this stage, 
our brain is extremely active, which can be recognized by the rapid movement of the eyes to the left and to the right under the closed eyelids. The stage can also be detected by various machines and tools. The most important information about it is, however, doubtlessly, the fact that we are dreaming intensively. REM stages are the main dream stages. During these stages, we run, we act, we meet people, we laugh, see colors. There is always much action. Being at the edge of consciousness during this stage, there is a danger that one almost wakes up, but does not wake up fully and then stands up thinks he is flying, jumps out of the window and hurts himself. Of course, this must be averted and therefore the body is held in a state of rigor during these stages. Especially the extremities, the arms and the legs are like fixed and we cannot move. During this stage, we also do not turn around. We lie relatively motionless. This is a precaution and prevents us from getting hurt. If there is no such blocking, when we can move, we might walk in sleep. It has happened that people go for a walk in the state of somnambulism or drive their car while sleeping without being aware of it. And it is true that people killed another person during that phase and were completely shocked about it, what they had done when they woke up. That is why the body is blocked. When we wake up during a REM sleep stage, it may be that you recognize that you are frozen stiff and cannot move. When somebody is just in the middle of a nightmare, at that moment, the horror will intensify and one can be highly panicked. There are some more deep sleep stages during the rest of the night, each of them shorter than the one before, and there are more REM sleep stages each of them longer than the one before and which are of a certain interest. We do not only dream, but there are other things happening of which I will tell you about shortly. In most cases, we wake up in the morning after our REM stage and there's just a small piece of a dream caught in our consciousness. The dream will vanish quickly if we do not try to cling to it by either writing it down or at least keeping it in our mind. Some people do not dream because they have to take certain medications, for example, antidepressants, which have the effect that you do not dream or dream very little. There are also certain diseases of the brain which cause a lack of dreams, but generally people do dream and this is important. Dreams have different functions and I will show you one of them in the example of an experiment with rats. The rats were put into a maze and they tried to find the exit. When they found it, they got a reward. Electrodes attached before the experiment measured the brain waves and the patterns were recorded. After some time, the rats fell asleep with their electrodes. In reading out the patterns, it became apparent that while sleeping, many of the rats produced the same patterns of the brain waves than they had produced in the maze. This leads to the conclusion that the rats ran through the maze once more in their dreams. 
Indeed, when the rats were put into the same maze the next day, they found their way to the exit much quicker. So one function of dreaming is learning. Not only the rats learn while they dream, so do we. We consolidate things we experienced and did throughout the day. When we in any form dream of what we did, for example, learn vocabulary, we will see that our results will improve significantly. This was verified in an experiment with students. The students had to solve math questions and those who dreamt of the tasks or of tasks in general were significantly more successful in solving the math questions than the ones who had not dreamed of them. This brings us to another field. On the one hand, we are able to say that the rats and the students had been in a minus position and reached a plus position through the training while they were sleeping. So there has been created a line of movement which does aim on the next day. Generally speaking, dreams also have a function of preparation for the next day. This effect is strongly reinforced by the mood that arises at the end of our sleep in a dream. Dreams are working particularly with emotions, with moods, and the mood at the end of our sleep decides how we start our day. After a positive, optimistic dream, we will start into the day in quite another way than after a nightmare or after a dream about something we could not cope with. The dream will have strong influence on the confidence and the mood of the day to come. I would now like to make some points on dream symbols. Dreams do not really work with rational means. They are very strongly using symbols and also metaphors. There are several reasons for this. The brain does not save holistic incidents, a whole story, but when we experience something, for example, go for a walk, see houses, meet other people, we do not save all this as one complete and complex entity in our brain, but everything is decomposed into fragments, into colors, sizes, movements, into the fence of whatever. When we remember the incidents, all the fragments are brought together out of the different memory areas. If we, for example, see a dog, there are memory areas for small dogs and for big dogs. That is for something big, for something small, for fur, for brown color, for black color, and so on. Or for different noises like barking and others. And when we remember or dream of it, these fragments are brought together. Very often, especially in dreams, the incident we experience by day is not reproduced like it had been. It is even difficult to remember events correctly in daytime. As we know, after an accident, we may have 10 witnesses and 12 different descriptions of what happened. We do not save precisely, and this is even more true for dreams. A dream does not at all try to say things in a realistic way, but it finally saves meanings, evaluations, but not true facts. 
eventually, what we experience in a dream is not common sense. Real things, facts, but always our private logic that reveals our personal evaluation and judgment. This applies to oneself and of course to the others or to expectations we have in the day to come and so on. It is always expressed in symbols and metaphors. When working with patients in counseling or psychotherapy, we often work on their lifestyle. We try to perceive the lifestyle of the client or patient in order to allow him or her to identify his line or her of movement. What is important for him or her? What is his or her perception of himself or herself, of his environment? Where there are misunderstandings and how and where they can lead to conflicts in his or her life. And we try to at least influence the lifestyle so that the patient is able to solve his conflicts more easily. For that purpose, we can use early recollections as well as dreams. In most cases, we would first work on the early recollection and then go on to dreams. It often makes sense to ask a patient or a client right at the beginning of the counseling or psychotherapy for the first dream before or after the first session. These dreams often show lines of movement. They show their perception of us as their counselor or psychotherapist and how they experience their own situation and want to shape it. Many years ago, for example, a young woman came to me for a therapy and I asked her, did you have a dream last night? And she answered, yes, I had a dream. I went to your office, you walked up to me and I kicked you off with my leg. This dream evidently reveals a clear message. In fact, it expressed, stay away from me, don't get too close. It soon became apparent that she did not want to work deeply on her problems. Her employer had sent her because he thought she needed a therapy while she was not ready for it yet. Nevertheless, we had about 30 sessions together because she arrived to have confidence in me and we were able to work in a good atmosphere and to make a therapy contract which allowed us to have 30 sessions. The initial dream, however, had been very important because it really said, you have to be careful with me and don't get too close. She finally made her therapy without me, more or less. She did not even wanted to hear my comments. As we are Adlerian therapists and counselors, dream work, dream analysis will not have top priority in our sessions, unlike in analytic therapy. But it is quite reasonable to work with the dreams as supplement to lifestyle analysis with the birth order, position, the family as a whole in the family constellation, the family atmosphere, experiences in school, and so on.
because dreams especially express and reflect emotional aspects and thus complete the picture drawn already with the help of ERs and the family constellation. I will now present three of my own dreams to give you an idea how it could be and what you could make out of it. When I was four years old, I had a terrible nightmare. It was really horrible. At that time, when I was four years old, I used to sleep between my grandparents. One night, they woke me up because I apparently was screaming and crying. They were very scared and they could not soothe me for a long time. And this was my nightmare. I found myself in a cave full of fire. There was a dragon. I was all alone and the dragon wanted to eat me. I was panicked. I did not know where to go, what to do. I felt completely helpless and it seems that I started yelling loudly during sleep and my grandparents woke me up. Even weeks after that nightmare, my grandparents used to talk about it, how horrible it had been and what difficulties they had had trying to soothe me. When you study psychotherapy, you always have to undergo a training analysis or at least several hours of psychotherapy. So during my studies, I mentioned that dream from time to time. We always came to similar conclusions, mainly that there had been a difficult birth, a difficult start into life, and that the dream expressed all the panic and the threat of that situation. When I later came to Aikasi, I once attended a course with Mika Katz, who was a truly blessed reader and interpreter of dreams. She was miraculous in working with dreams. In this course, I presented my dream and we looked for an experience in my life which was closer in time to my dream than the situation of my own birth. And I found the following early recollection. It is after kindergarten, at noon. I go home. The sun is shining. It is nice and warm. I slowly walk towards our house. We lived in a small farm on top of a hill. I went up the road, like always. I arrived on top of the hill and there were several adults. They all were crying and were very sad. It turned out that my younger cousin Maria two years younger than me. She was two and I was four years old, had died this morning. The next recollection I have is to see four men carrying her little white coffin out of the house. And then another recollection, when we were at the cemetery, and the small coffin is lowered into the grave. I do not really remember having mourned, but evidently this event must have shocked me profoundly. My little cousin had been very important for me. Our relationship had been really close and all of a sudden she was no longer there. 
possibly the dream was the expression of danger, of helplessness, and also desperation. It is interesting to know that the nightmare lost its power then. After I worked on it with Mika Katz, I hardly ever thought of it again, and it was no longer scary like it had been before. I easily could cope with it, no problem. In the context of the death of my little cousin, I would like to talk about another observation. The experience has changed my lifestyle, my movement fundamentally. I started to defend little girls, to be there for them. Whenever I noticed that little girls were attacked or teased, I stepped in. I remember that one day when I was eight years or maybe seven years old, I was able to see from our house on the hill two girls of about six or seven years walking home down in the village. Two older and taller boys came by and started teasing the girls massively. No question that I ran down to the village right away. I started yelling and intervened by defending the girls right tooth and nail. Even later, as a psychotherapist, I always stood up for women and I'm sure that many of them had a benefit from my attitude. But sometimes it even was too much and the women had no benefit because sometimes I wanted much more for them than they wanted for themselves. They would have been satisfied with much less and the therapy was not a big su success then. I managed by consulting a supervisor regularly, which certainly makes sense for all of us. During the 45 years I worked as a therapist and a counselor, I constantly went to supervision groups. Once the lifestyle is formed, it is hard to change. The fundamental direction stays the same and does not change completely, even after a lifestyle analysis or a therapy. My aspect of being there for women has always been part of my lifestyle and sometimes even still is now, but in a more subtle way. I know the problem by now and I'm more careful of this, but it never vanishes completely. So I think that supervision is necessary for all persons working in our profession. I wanted to tell you about two more dreams, but we ran out of time to make it short. I dreamt these dreams while I was a student. One time, I was not really well prepared for an exam and the dream expressed my feelings that there is still so much to do. In my dream, I was sitting in the library just panicking how I could manage it. And in the other dream, when I had learned a lot and I was a good cheer, cheer, in my dream I went for a walk with colleagues, we had fun and I talked about another person who was to take an exam and we were sure he would be successful. I went to my exam in this mood and I passed it. Therefore, there would be a great deal to say, but I have to stop for today. Have a good time and thank you.